most people should realize within four to five years of attempting venture, uh, whether this is this is a profession that they should pursue for life. Right? I don't think it should take longer than that. Um, that said, we've had people leaving after six, seven years. Uh, maybe they thought the risk rewards were not good enough. Uh, maybe they want to try something else. Depends on the age at which you check in as well. Um, you have different levels of maturity, uh, different levels of aspiration. You know, you're not, uh, the early post-college year rat race is very different from a mid-30s, mid-40s uh, sort of self-awareness. So, if you're, if you're thinking about uh, venture it, and you know your answer in that four, five years, after that, you're not benchmarking it to quote unquote a profession in the way you see any other career path, right? Which is, you know, and maybe people know it and they love it, like how they want to be a consultant or how they want to be a banker or how they want to be a marketeer and want bigger and bigger canvases. That's how they grow. Uh, here, venture is not that. Venture continues to be a craft where you do the same thing almost every year um, without any expansion of canvas per se. It's not like, you know, you suddenly start writing 20, 30 checks in a year. Never, right? It'll still be two to three, two to three, two to three. And so you keep going with that uh, sort of rhythm and monotony, uh, whether you like it or not. And so you have to be very zen about canvas being constrained in a way that you are happy with what happens uh, in each year and the legacy from your prior years of investing is still playing out for sometimes 8, 10, 15 years. So you're never going to get rid of all of that baggage one fine day or exit very simplistically. Um, so when you, when, you, when you put all of that in context, venture careers by definition have to be thought of as very long term. The second is, it's not your money. You're not getting paid to do a job as much as you're being paid to generate outrageous returns, which you get a share of, by the way. So in that sense, it's very entrepreneurial. Um, and which is where I feel a lot of youngsters miss the, miss the boat entirely, on, on, or miss the memo rather, that you want to be a venture capitalist. It doesn't matter whether you founded the firm, whether you joined as an early partner, whether you aspirationally a late partner. On day one, you're an entrepreneur, right? Because fundamentally, whether Karthik is sitting or Ashish is sitting inside of Bloom and allocating you some capital as risk capital to be able to help make decisions, or whether it's coming directly from the LP, I actually feel it is the same path, same decision. Uh, all we are doing is moderating or overseeing the risk that you are, you are asking the firm to take as a younger member. But the dollars that are going are going from the same collective pocket which means that the investor has actually bestowed this responsibility of allocating that capital to what you think is going to be a winning investment. Which means you're living on borrowed money, which is the life of an entrepreneur. It's not the life of a job seeker, right? A job seeker essentially comes in to most places. Uh, of course, a lot of people rely on heavy funding in the early years, but you're not playing that game of three, four years, two years as a job, you're fundamentally playing the 10-year game, which means that you're always living on borrowed money in one fund or the other. So you might have returned fund one, but you're now borrowed on fund two, you're borrowing on fund three. And as you're getting more senior, more of the responsibility is coming on you, that you are actually taking capital from someone and you're, you're now responsible for even a larger pool of capital, even larger number of investments and generating returns on them. Which then means, then, as I go back, the punchline is a venture capitalist is an entrepreneur. And the challenge I find is a lot of folks come in and can't understand that from the get-go, want results very quickly or start benchmarking to how a job should be paying someone. Whereas, uh, we are the same people sitting here and right, doing podcasts and, and talking about compounding and 10-year journeys for entrepreneurs, who, by the way, half of them fail to get there. Uh, we don't have an option in venture capital. So you can't be not practicing what you preach. So in a sense, we are effectively indexing and over-indexing 
all compensation, all rewards, all alignment of interest to whether you're going to be here for 10 plus years and whether your investments are going to hit it out of the park. And we know a lot of it has to do with luck. Investments may or may not hit it out of the park, but if we are all collectively delighted with each other in the, the input metrics that we use to make those decisions for eight, 10 years, we share equally amongst us, right? So it's not like my success is not yours and your success is not mine, but which, is, which then leads to a second order challenge of entrepreneurship, which means you have to trust and believe in the partnership that has come together. If you don't like half the partnership, you don't belong in the firm. You shouldn't even join the firm, right? Uh, so you might say, no, no, I like one guy there. I think I'll go and make, I'll find a boss who'll keep me happy. Uh, it doesn't work in venture. Essentially on day one, whether you like it or not, you have, whether you want to call them bosses, partners, mentors, you have four or five or six or three of them, depending on the size of the firm. And you're not going to be able to grow in this firm or reach that pinnacle if you do not win all of them over. So you can't have a, a siloed existence in a venture capital firm. So basically the idea that you have to be entrepreneurial to be able to build your own track record, to be responsible for your own subset of capital is the thrill, the joy, but also then you have to calibrate how you're compensated for that thrill and joy and for that education that you're getting from the firm. Uh, and on the other hand, if you don't believe in the end state that you want to be partners with half a dozen people or more and respect them as they would respect you at that end state, why even bother starting? Because you're, if you don't get to that stage, this is just a training ground. If you get to that stage, then you again have to be as entrepreneurial as each one of your partners. So when folks come and say, uh, you know, um, I'm sure the partner is taking a lot of money. I think you should judge. You, you, you're right, you should judge how the partners actually reward themselves. We're probably unashamedly one of the lowest paid partner ecosystems in the entire Indian industry for a, forget about a $290 million fund, even for a hundred plus million dollar fund. Why? Because we believe in sharing with our younger uh, team that we are grooming, not keeping too much of that capital for ourselves and being greedy because we, are, we want to be fully aligned with what we are selling to the whole team and to the industry and say that we'll earn when we make carry. If you're as good, we should make the money of the carry. What is the fees? It's borrowed money. You haven't even, in three of our funds, I'll admit, I mean, in one is brand new, but in the other two, we all, we're fully drawn down, but we've not returned the money, which means we're drawing on fees and borrowed money and living off that for expenses before actually we, we return uh, uh, the gains and the capital back. So I think there's a humility in knowing that and saying that we don't deserve more than a certain amount. Uh, just because there's fees lying around, it doesn't mean that you load your pockets and not build out a great team, uh, which can support portfolio and be get better outcomes. So the breadth of the team, the, the, the quality, the caliber of what partners are taking, the, your benchmarks inside of the firm, are things that you need to judge before you come into the firm. I don't think you can come into a firm which has 40 people today as an example of Bloom, and second guess that we haven't thought through all of this. Of course, we've thought through all of this. Uh, if you're not comfortable, I don't think there's a starting point. And there are other firms, everybody has their own choices to make. Um, and that is how I see it. The last punchline on this, by the way, a humorous anecdote is, um, you know, folks go in with three, four years of experience to an ISB. Uh, they go with zero to two years of experience into an IM, uh, in the, a top IM in this country. And they plunk 30 lakhs uh, of just fees. I'm not talking about all associated expenses. Those are the same whether you live in Indranagar or whether you live in campus. Um, if you look at the associated um, uh, experiences and the learning that you get out of a classroom and the campus experience and what you get exposed to in campus, you're willing to pay 30 plus lakhs in, a, in an IAM and maybe 40 odd lakhs in an ISB for a two-year and a one-year program. Clearly, you're seeing significant value in what that learning and that ecosystem gives you. Yet, no one is willing to appreciate the fact that a venture apprenticeship, uh, just because you came from one of the schools and you put in four years in some fancy company, most of the time, most people on this venture journey that I've walked you through are starting at step zero. 
right? And you, if you, if you, uh, once occasionally you'll get somebody laterally, and we'll compensate or we'll fix that, right? But if you're coming in at step zero, that all of that training cost is on us if you walk out of the door. So the optionality is yours, not ours, right? I have an option, of course, but the 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 chances and the fear of that walking out of the door are significantly higher biased in your favor, not in ours. Uh, you might, both of us might realize you're not great at this investing or you dislike it and find our own path and uh, over after three to five years. But that three to five years is super expensive because it's come at the cost of not being able to train somebody else. Um, and to think of the opportunity cost of that from the firm's perspective and the opportunity cost or the, or the training uh, value that you're getting from your from the candidate's perspective is totally understated and uh, it is mis it is just deemed as irrelevant whereas I feel it's an important part of how you think you should be compensated as you start your venture journey.